Afonso de Albuquerque, 1st Duke of Goa, c. 1453, December 16, 1515, was a Portuguese general, admiral, and statesman. He served as Viceroy of Portuguese India from 1509 to 1515, during which he expanded Portuguese influence across the Indian Ocean and built a reputation as a fierce and skilled military commander. Albuquerque advanced the threefold Portuguese grand scheme of combating Islam, spreading Christianity, and securing the trade of spices by establishing a Portuguese Asian empire. Among his achievements, Albuquerque managed to conquer Goa and was the first European of the Renaissance to raid the Persian Gulf, and he led the first voyage by a European fleet into the Red Sea. He is generally considered a highly effective military commander, and probably the greatest naval commander of the age, given his successful strategy, he attempted to close all the Indian Ocean naval passages to the Atlantic, Red Sea, Persian Gulf, and to the Pacific, transforming it into a Portuguese Mare Clausum. He was appointed head of the fleet of the Arabian and Persian Sea in 1506. Many of the conflicts in which he was directly involved took place in the Indian Ocean, in the Persian Gulf regions for control of the trade routes, and on the coasts of India. It was his military brilliance in these initial campaigns that enabled Portugal to become the first global empire in history. He led the Portuguese forces in numerous battles, including the conquest of Goa in 1510 and the capture of Malacca in 1511. During the last five years of his life, he turned to administration, where his actions as the second governor of Portuguese India were crucial to the longevity of the Portuguese Empire. He oversaw the expeditions that resulted in the establishment of diplomatical contacts with Thailand through his envoy Duarte Fernandes, with Pegu in Myanmar, with Timor and the Moluccas through a voyage headed by Antonio de Abreu and Francisco Serrao and laid the path for European trade with Ming China through Rafael Perestrello. He also aided in establishing diplomatic relations with Ethiopia, and established diplomatic ties with Persia during the Safavid dynasty. Throughout his career, he received epithets such as the Terrible, the Great, the Lion of the Seas, the Portuguese Mars, and the Caesar of the East. Coat of arms of Albuquerque Afonso de Albuquerque was born in 1453 in Aleandra, near Lisbon. He was the second son of Gonzalo de Albuquerque, Lord of Vila Verde dos Francos, and Dona Leonor de Menezes. His father held an important position at court and was connected by remote illegitimate descent with the Portuguese monarchy. He was a descendant of King Denis's illegitimate son, Afonso Sanchez, Lord of Albuquerque. He was educated in mathematics and Latin at the court of Afonso V of Portugal, where he befriended Prince John, the future King John II of Portugal. In 1471, under the command of Afonso V, he was present at the conquest of Tangier and Arzala in Morocco, serving there as an officer for some years. In 1476 he accompanied Prince John in wars against Castile, including the Battle of Toro. He participated in the campaign on the Italian peninsula in 1480 to assist Ferdinand I of Naples in repelling the Ottoman invasion of Otranto. On his return in 1481, when Prince John was crowned as King John II, Albuquerque was made master of the horse and chief equerry to the king, a post which he held throughout John's reign. In 1489 he returned to military campaigning in North Africa, as commander of defense in the Graciosa Fortress, an island in the river Luco near the city of Laroche. In 1490 Albuquerque was part of the guard of King John II. He returned to Arzala in 1495, where his younger brother Merchim died fighting by his side. When King Manuel I of Portugal ascended to the throne following the death of John, he held a cautious attitude towards Albuquerque, who was a close friend of his predecessor and 17 years Manuel Sr. Eight years later, on April 6, 1503 Albuquerque was sent on his first expedition to India together with his cousin Francisco de Albuquerque. Each commanded three ships, sailing with Duarte Pacheco Pereira and Nicolau Coelho. They engaged in several battles against the forces of the Zamorin of Calicut and succeeded in establishing the King of Cochin securely on his throne. In return, the King gave them permission to build the Portuguese Fort Emmanuel and establish trade relations with Quillen. This laid the foundation for the Eastern Portuguese Empire. Map of the Arabian Peninsula showing the Red Sea with Socotra Island and the Persian Gulf with the Strait of Hormuz Albuquerque returned home in July 1504, and was well received by King Manuel I. After he assisted with the creation of a strategy for the Portuguese efforts in the east. King Manuel entrusted him with the command of a squadron of five vessels in the fleet of 16 sailing for India in early 1506, headed by Tristão de Cunha. 
The aim of the expedition was to conquer Socotra and build a fortress there, hoping to close the trade in the Red Sea. Albuquerque went as chief captain for the coast of Arabia, sailing under de Cunha's orders until reaching Mozambique. He carried a sealed letter with a secret mission ordered by the king, after fulfilling the first mission, he was to replace the first viceroy of India, Francisco de Almeida, whose term ended two years later. Before departing, he legitimized his son Braz, and made his will. First conquest of Socotra and Ormuz, 1507 The fleet left Lisbon on April 6, 1506. Albuquerque piloted his ship himself, having lost his appointed pilot on departure. In Mozambique Channel, they rescued Captain João de Nova, who had encountered difficulties on his return from India, de Nova and his ship, the Fral de la Mar, joined de Cunha's fleet. From Malindi, de Cunha sent envoys to Ethiopia, which at the time was thought to be closer to India than it actually is, under the aegis of Albuquerque. After failing to reach Ethiopia, he managed to land the envoys in Filuk. After successful attacks on Arab cities on the East African coast, the expedition conquered the island of Socotra and built a fortress at Souk, hoping to establish a base to stop the Red Sea commerce to the Indian Ocean. However, Socotra was abandoned four years later, as it was eventually realized to be a poor location for a base. The Fort of Our Lady of the Conception, Hormuz Island, Iran at Socotra, they parted ways, Tristão de Cunha sailed for India, where he would relieve the Portuguese besieged at Cananor. While Afonso took seven ships and 500 men to Ormuz in the Persian Gulf, one of the chief eastern centers of commerce. On his way, he conquered the cities of Curiati, Muscat in July 1507, and Corfakan, accepting the submission of the cities of Kalhat and Sohar. He arrived at Ormuz on 25th of September and soon captured the city, which agreed to become a tributary state of the Portuguese king. Statue of Afonso de Albuquerque, symbolically standing on a stack of weapons, referencing his reply in Hormuz Hormuz was then a tributary state of Shah Ismail of Persia. In a famous episode, shortly after its conquest Albuquerque was confronted by Persian envoys, who demanded the payment of the due tribute from him instead. He ordered them to be given a stock of cannonballs, arrows and weapons, retorting that such was the currency struck in Portugal to pay the tribute demanded from the dominions of King Manuel. According to Braz de Albuquerque, it was Shah Ishmael who coined the term Lion of the Seas, addressing Albuquerque as such. Afonso began building the Fort of Our Lady of Victory, engaging his men of all ranks in the work. However, some of his officers revolted against the heavy work and climate in, claiming that Afonso was exceeding his orders, departed for India. With the fleet reduced to two ships and left without supplies, he was unable to maintain his position for long. Forced to abandon Ormuz in January 1508, he raided coastal villages to resupply the settlement of Socotra, returned to Ormuz, and then headed to India. Arrest at Cananor, 1509 Afonso arrived at Cananor on the Malabar coast in December 1508, where he opened before the viceroy, Dom Francisco de Almeida. The sealed letter which he had received from the king, and which named him as governor to succeed Almeida. The viceroy, supported by the officers who had abandoned Afonso at Ormuz, had a matching royal order, but declined to yield, protesting. That his term ended only in January and stating his intention to avenge his son's death by fighting the Mamluk fleet of Myrasam. Refusing Afonso's offer to fight the Mamluk fleet himself. Afonso avoided confrontation, which could have led to civil war, and moved to Kochi, India, to await further instruction from the king, maintaining his own entourage. Increasingly isolated, he wrote to Diogo Lopes de Sequeira, who arrived in India with a new fleet but was ignored as Sequeira joined Almeida. At the same time, Afonso refused approaches from opponents of Almeida who encouraged him to seize power. On February 3, 1509, Almeida fought the naval battle of Dew against a joint fleet of Mamluks, Ottomans, the Zamorn of Kalikat, and the Sultan of Gujarat, regarding it as personal revenge for the death of his son. His victory was decisive, the Ottomans and Mamluks abandoned the Indian Ocean, easing the way for Portuguese rule there for the next century. In August, after a petition from Afonso's former officers with the support of Diogo Lopes de Sequeira claiming him unfit for governance, Afonso was sent in custody to Street. Angelo Ford in Cananor. There he remained under what he considered to be imprisonment. Afonso de Albuquerque as governor of India Afonso was released after three months' confinement, on the arrival at Cananor of Marshal of Portugal Fernando Cochinho with a large fleet. Cochinho was the most important Portuguese noble ever to visit India up to that point 
and he brought an armada of fifteen ships and three thousand men sent by the king to defend Afonso's rights, and to take Colicut. On November 4, 1509, Afonso became the second governor of Portuguese India, a position he would hold until his death. Almeida set off to return to Portugal, though he would be killed before he got there in a skirmish with the Coho. Upon his assuming office, Afonso intended to dominate the Muslim world and control the spice trade. Initially King Manuel I and his council in Lisbon tried to distribute the power, outlining three areas of jurisdiction in the Indian Ocean. In 1509, the nobleman Diogo Lopes de Sequeira was sent with a fleet to Southeast Asia, to seek an agreement with Sultan Mahmud Shah of Malacca, but failed and returned to Portugal. To Jorge de Aguiar was given the region between the Cape of Good Hope and Gujarat. He was succeeded by Duarte de Lemos, but left for Cochin and then for Portugal, leaving his fleet to Afonso. Illustration depicts the aftermath of the Portuguese conquest of Goa, from the forces of Yusuf Adil Shah. In January 1510, obeying the orders from the king and aware of the absence of the Zamorin, Afonso advanced on Calica. The attack was initially successful, but unraveled when Marshal Cochinho, infuriated by Albuquerque's success against Calicut and desiring glory for himself, attacked the Zamorin's palace against Albuquerque's advice, and was ambushed. During the retreat, Afonso was badly wounded and was forced to flee to the ships, barely escaping with his life, while Cochinho was killed. Soon after the failed attack, Afonso assembled a fleet of 23 ships and 1,200 men. Contemporary reports state that he wanted to fight the Egyptian Mamluk Sultanate fleet in the Red Sea or return to Hormuz. However, he had been informed by Tomoji that it would be easier to fight them in Goa. Where they had sheltered after the Battle of Diu, and also of the illness of the Sultan Yusuf Adil Shah, and war between the Deccan Sultanates. So he relied on surprise in the capture of Goa from the Sultanate of Bijapur. A first assault took place in Goa from 4 March to May 20, 1510. After initial occupation, feeling unable to hold the city given the poor condition of its fortifications, the cooling of Hindu residents' support and insubordination among his ranks following an attack by Ismail Adil Shah. Afonso refused a truce offered by the Sultan and abandoned the city in August. His fleet was scattered, and a palace revolt in Kochi hindered his recovery, so he headed to Fort on Hediva. New ships arrived from Portugal, which were intended for the nobleman Diogo Mendes de Vasconcelos at Malacca, who had been given a rival command of the region. Three months later, on 25th of November Afonso reappeared at Goa with a renovated fleet. Diogo Mendes de Vasconcelos was compelled to accompany him with the reinforcements from Malacca and about 300 Malabari reinforcements from Kananor. In less than a day, they took Goa from Ismail Adil Shah and his Ottoman allies, who surrendered on 10th of December. It is estimated that 6,000 of the 9,000 Muslim defenders of the city died, either in the fierce battle in the streets or by drowning while trying to escape. Afonso regained the support of the Hindu population, although he frustrated the initial expectations of Tomoji, who aspired to become governor. Afonso rewarded him by appointing him chief aguazil of the city, an administrator and representative of the Hindu and Muslim people, as a knowledgeable interpreter of the local customs. He then made an agreement to lower the yearly tribute. Coining of money for Dalbuquerque at Goa in Goa, Afonso established the first Portuguese mint in the east, after Tomoja's merchants had complained of the scarcity of currency, taking it as an opportunity to solidify the territorial conquest. The new coin, based on the existing local coins, showed a cross on the obverse and an armillary sphere, King Manuel's badge, on the reverse. Gold cruzados or manuais, silver asferas and alpha spheras, and bronze liais were issued. Albuquerque founded at Goa the Hospital Real de Goa or Royal Hospital of Goa, by the Church of Santa Catarina. Upon hearing that the doctors were extorting the sickly with excessive fees, Albuquerque summoned them, declaring that you charge a physician's pay and don't know what disease the men who serve our Lord the King suffer from. Thus, I want to teach you what is it that they die from and put them to work building the city walls all day till nightfall before releasing them. Despite constant attacks, Goa became the center of Portuguese India, with the conquest triggering the compliance of neighboring kingdoms, the Sultan of Gujarat and the Zamorin of Calicut sent embassies, offering alliances and local grants to fortify. Afonso then used Goa to secure the spice trade in favor of Portugal and sell Persian horses to Vihayanagara and Hindu princes in return for their assistance. Malacca, with a famosa, depicted by Albuquerque's scrivener, Gaspar Korea. Afonso explained to his armies why the Portuguese wanted to capture Malacca, a famosa proper, by Manuel Godinho de Aridia in February 1511, 
through a friendly Hindu merchant. Nina Chatu, Afonso received a letter from Rui de Araujo, one of the 19 Portuguese held at Malacca since 1509. It urged moving forward with the largest possible fleet to demand their release, and gave details of the fortifications. Afonso showed it to Diogo Mendes de Vasconcelos, as an argument to advance in a joint fleet. In April 1511, after fortifying Goa, he gathered a force of about 900 Portuguese, 200 Hindu mercenaries and about 18 ships. He then sailed to Malacca against orders and despite the protest of Diogo Mendes, who claimed command of the expedition. Afonso eventually centralized the Portuguese government in the Indian Ocean. After the Malaccan conquest he wrote a letter to the king to explain his disagreement with Diogo Mendes, suggesting that further divisions could be harmful to the Portuguese in India. Under his command was Ferdinand Magellan, who had participated in the failed embassy of Diogo Lopes to Sequeira in 1509. The surviving gate of the A. Famosa Portuguese fortress in Malacca conquest of Malacca, steady painting by Ernesto Candacea after a false start towards the Red Sea, they sailed to the Strait of Malacca. It was the richest city that the Portuguese tried to take, and a focal point in the trade network where Malay traders met Gujarati, Chinese, Japanese, Javanese, Bengali, Persian, and Arabic, among others, described by Tamay Piris as of invaluable richness. Despite its wealth, it was mostly a wooden-built city, with few masonry buildings but was defended by a mercenary force estimated at 20,000 men and more than 2,000 pieces of artillery. Its greatest weakness was the unpopularity of the government of Sultan Mahmud Shah, who favored Muslims, arousing dissatisfaction amongst other merchants. Afonso made a bold approach to the city, his ships decorated with banners, firing cannon volleys. He declared himself lord of all the navigation, demanded the Sultan release the prisoners and pay for damages, and demanded consent to build a fortified trading post. The Sultan eventually freed the prisoners, but was unimpressed by the small Portuguese contingent. Afonso then burned some ships at the port and four coastal buildings as a demonstration. The city being divided by the Malacca River, the connecting bridge was a strategic point, so at dawn on 25th of July the Portuguese landed and fought a tough battle, facing poisoned arrows, taking the bridge in the evening. After fruitlessly waiting for the Sultan's reaction, they returned to the ships and prepared a junk, filling it with men, artillery and sandbags. Commanded by Antonio de Abreu, it sailed upriver at high tide to the bridge. The day after, all had landed. After a fierce fight during which the Sultan appeared with an army of war elephants, the defenders were dispersed and the Sultan fled. Afonso waited for the reaction of the Sultan. Merchants approached, asking for Portuguese protection. They were given banners to mark their premises, a sign that they would not be looted. On 15th of August, the Portuguese attacked again, but the Sultan had fled the city. Under strict orders, they looted the city, but respected the banners. Afonso prepared Malacca's defenses against a Malay counterattack, building a fortress, assigning his men to shifts and using stones from the mosque and the cemetery. Despite the delays caused by heat and malaria, it was completed in November 1511, its surviving door now known as Afamosa. It was possibly then that Afonso had a large stone engraved with the names of the participants in the conquest. To quell disagreements over the order of the names, he had it set facing the wall, with the single inscription Lapidim came reprobaverunt edificantes on the front. He settled the Portuguese administration, reappointing Rui de Araujo as factor, a post assigned before his 1509 arrest, and appointing rich merchant Nina Chatter to replace the previous Bandahara. Besides assisting in the governance of the city and first Portuguese coinage, he provided the junks for several diplomatic missions. Meanwhile, Afonso arrested and had executed the powerful Javanese merchant Utimidi Raja who, after being appointed to a position in the Portuguese administration as representative of the Javanese population, had maintained contacts with the exiled royal family. Shipwreck on the Flor de la Mar, 1511 replica of a Portuguese carrick at the Maritime Museum of Malacca, made in reference to the Flor du Mar on 20th of November. 1,511 Afonso sailed from Malacca to the coast of Malabar on the old floor de la Mar Carrick that had served to support the conquest of Malacca. Despite its unsound condition, he used it to transport the treasure amassed in the conquest, given its large capacity. He wanted to give the court of King Manuel a show of Malaccan treasures. There were also the offers from the Kingdom of Siam to the King of Portugal and all his own fortune. On the voyage the floor de la Mar was wrecked in a storm, and Afonso barely escaped drowning. Embassies to Pegu, Sumatra, and Siam, 
1,511 most Muslim and Gujarati merchants having fled the city, Afonso who invested in diplomatic efforts demonstrating generosity to Southeast Asian merchants. Like the Chinese, to encourage good relations with the Portuguese. Trade and diplomatic missions were sent to continental kingdoms, Rui Nunes de Cunha was sent to Pegu, from where King Binyaram sent back a friendly emissary to Kochi in 1514 and Sumatra. Sumatran kings of Kampar and Dragiri sending emissaries to Afonso accepting the new power, as vassal states of Malacca. Knowing of Siamese ambitions over Malacca, Afonso sent Duarte Fernandez in a diplomatic mission to the kingdom of Siam, returning in a Chinese junk. He was one of the Portuguese who had been arrested in Malacca, having gathered knowledge about the culture of the region. There he was the first European to arrive, establishing amicable relations between the Kingdom of Portugal and the court of the King of Siam Ramativity II, returning with a Siamese envoy bearing gifts and letters to Afonso and the King of Portugal. Expedition to the Spice Islands, 1512 depiction of Ternate with São João Batista Fort, built in 1522 in November, after having secured Malacca and learning the location of the then secret Spice Islands. Afonso sent three ships to find them, led by trusted Antonio de Abreu with Deputy Commander Francisco Cerro. Malay sailors were recruited to guide them through Java, the Lesser Sunda Islands and the Ambon Island to Banda Islands, where they arrived in early 1512. There they remained for a month, buying and filling their ships with nutmeg and cloves. Antonio de Abreu then sailed to Amboina while Cerro sailed towards the Moluccas, but he was shipwrecked near Saram. Sultan Abu Lais of Ternate heard of their stranding, and, seeing a chance to ally himself with a powerful foreign nation, brought them to Ternate in 1512 where they were permitted to build a fort on the island. The Forte de São João Batista de Ternate, built in 1522. Afonso returned from Malacca to Cochin, but could not sail to Goa as it faced a serious revolt headed by the forces of Ismail Adil Shah, the Sultan of Bijapur, commanded by Rasul Khan and his countrymen. During Afonso's absence from Malacca, Portuguese who opposed the taking of Goa had waived its possession, even writing to the king that it would be best to let it go. Held up by the monsoon and with few forces available, Afonso had to wait for the arrival of reinforcement fleets headed by his nephew D. Garcia de Noronha and Jorge de Melo Pereira. While at Cochin, Albuquerque started a school. In a private letter to King Manuel I, he stated that he had found a chest full of books with which to teach the children of married Portuguese settlers and Christian converts, of which there were about a hundred, to read and write. On September 10, 1512, Afonso sailed from Cochin to Goa with 14 ships carrying 1,700 soldiers. Determined to recapture the fortress, he ordered trenches dug and a wall breached. But on the day of the planned final assault, Rasul Khan surrendered. Afonso demanded the fort be handed over with its artillery, ammunition and horses, and the deserters to be given up. Some had joined Rasul Khan when the Portuguese were forced to flee Goa in May 1510, others during the recent siege. Rasul Khan consented, on condition that their lives be spared. Afonso agreed and he left Goa. He did spare the lives of the deserters, but had them horribly mutilated. One such renegade was Fernal Lopes, bound for Portugal in custody, who escaped at the island of St. Helena and led a Robinson Crusoe life for many years. After such measures the town became the most prosperous Portuguese settlement in India. Attempted Portuguese scaling of the walls of Aden in December 1512 an envoy from Ethiopia arrived at Goa. Mateus was sent by the regent Queen Eleni, following the arrival of the Portuguese from Socotra in 1507, as an ambassador for the King of Portugal in search of a coalition to help face growing Muslim influence. He was received in Goa with great honour by Afonso, as a long-sought Prester John envoy. His arrival was announced by King Manuel to Pope Leo X in 1513. Although Mateus faced the distrust of Afonso's rivals, who tried to prove he was some imposter or Muslim spy, Afonso sent him to Portugal. The king is described as having wept with joy at their report. In February 1513, while Mateus was in Portugal, Afonso sailed to the Red Sea with a force of about 1,000 Portuguese and 400 Malabaris. He was under orders to secure the channel for Portugal. Socotra had proved ineffective to control the Red Sea entrance and was abandoned, and Afonso's hint that Masawa could be a good Portuguese base might have been influenced by Mateus' reports. Knowing that the Mamluks were preparing a second fleet at Suez, he wanted to advance before reinforcements arrived in Aden, and accordingly laid siege to the city. Aden was a fortified city, but although he had scaling ladders they broke during the chaotic attack. 
after half a day of fierce battle Afonso was forced to retreat. He cruised the Red Sea inside the Bab al-Mandab, with the first European fleet to have sailed this route. He attempted to reach Jeddah, but the winds were unfavorable and so he sheltered at Comoran Island in May, until sickness among the men and lack of fresh water forced him to retreat. In August 1513, after a second attempt to reach Aden, he returned to India with no substantial results. In order to destroy the power of Egypt, he wrote to King Manuel of the idea of diverting the course of the Nile River to render the whole country barren. He also intended to steal the body of the Islamic prophet, Muhammad, and hold it for ransom until all Muslims had left the Holy Land. Portrait of Afonso de Albuquerque, Governor of Portuguese Indies, from Pedro Barreto de Resende's Livro de Estado de India Oriental Although Albuquerque's expedition failed to reach Suez. Such an incursion into the Red Sea by a Christian fleet for the first time in history stunned the Muslim world, and panic spread in Cairo. The Portuguese fort at Calicut Albuquerque achieved during his term a favorable end to hostilities between the Portuguese and the Zamorin of Calicut, which had lasted since the massacre of the Portuguese in Calicut in 1502. As naval trade faltered and vassals defected, with no foreseeable solutions to the conflict with the Portuguese, the court of the Zamorin fell to infighting. The ruling Zamorin was assassinated and replaced by a rival, under the instigation of Albuquerque, permitting peace talks to commence. The Portuguese were allowed to build a fortress in Calicut itself, and acquired rights to obtain as much pepper and ginger as they wished, at stipulated prices, and half the customs duties of Calicut as yearly tribute. Construction of the fortress began immediately, under the supervision of Chief Architect Tomás Fernández. Christian maidens of Goa, meeting with a Portuguese nobleman seeking a wife with peace concluded, in 1514 Afonso devoted himself to governing Goa and receiving embassies from Indian governors. Strengthening the city and encouraging marriages of Portuguese men and local women. At that time, Portuguese women were barred from traveling overseas in order to maintain discipline among the men on board the ships. In 1511 under a policy which Afonso promulgated, the Portuguese government encouraged their explorers to marry local women. To promote settlement, the King of Portugal granted freeman status and exemption from crown taxes to Portuguese men who ventured overseas and married local women. With Afonso's encouragement, mixed marriages flourished. He appointed local people for positions in the Portuguese administration and did not interfere with local traditions. In March 1514 King Manuel sent to Pope Leo X a huge and exotic embassy led by Tristão da Cunha, who toured the streets of Rome in an extravagant procession of animals from the colonies and wealth from the Indies. His reputation reached its peak, laying foundations of the Portuguese Empire in the east. In early 1514, Afonso sent ambassadors to Gujarat Sultan Muzaffar Shah II, ruler of Kambe, to seek permission to build a fort on Diu, India. The mission returned without an agreement, but diplomatic gifts were exchanged, including an Indian rhinoceros. Afonso sent the rhino to King Manuel, making it the first living example of a rhinoceros seen in Europe since the Roman Empire. Portrait of Afonso de Albuquerque, from the Livro de Lisuarte do Bru Duras Rhinoceros, woodcut in 1513, at Cananor. Afonso was visited by a Persian ambassador from Shah Ismail I, who had sent ambassadors to Gujarat, Ormuz, and Bijapur. The Shah's ambassador to Bijapur invited Afonso to send back an envoy to Persia. Miguel Ferreira was sent via Ormuz to Tabriz, where he had several interviews with the Shah about common goals on defeating the Mamluk Sultan. At the same time, Albuquerque decided to conclude the effective conquest of Hormuz. He had learned that after the Portuguese retreat in 1507, a young king was reigning under the influence of a powerful Persian vizier, Reis Hamed, whom the king greatly feared. At Ormuz in March 1515, Afonso met the king and asked the vizier to be present. He then had him immediately stabbed and killed by his entourage, thus freeing the terrified king, so the island and the Persian Gulf yielded to him without resistance and remained a vassal state of the Portuguese Empire. Ormuz itself would not be Persian territory for another century, until an English-Persian alliance finally expelled the Portuguese in 1622. At Ormuz, Afonso met with Miguel Ferreira, returning with rich presents and an ambassador, carrying a letter from the Persian potentate Shah Ismail, inviting Afonso to become a leading lord in Persia. There he remained, engaging in diplomatic efforts, receiving envoys and overseeing the construction of the new fortress, while becoming increasingly ill. His illness was reported as early as September 1515. In November 1515, he embarked on a journey back to Goa. Death at this time, 
his political enemies at the Portuguese court were planning his downfall. They had lost no opportunity in stirring up the jealousy of King Manuel against him, insinuating that Afonso intended to usurp power in Portuguese India. While on his return voyage from Ormuz in the Persian Gulf, near the harbour of Chal, he received news of a Portuguese fleet arriving from Europe, bearing dispatches announcing that he was to be replaced by his personal foe, Lopo Soares de Albergaria. Realizing the plot that his enemies had moved against him, profoundly disillusioned, he voiced his bitterness, grave must be my sins before. The king, for I am in ill favor with the king for love of the men, and with the men for love of the king. Feeling himself near death. He donned the surcoat of the Order of Santiago, of which he was a knight, and drew up his will, appointed the captain and senior officials of Ormuz, and organized a final council with his captains to decide the main matters affecting the Portuguese state of India. He wrote a brief letter to King Manuel, asking him to confer onto his natural son all of the high honors and rewards that Afonso had received, and assuring Manuel of his loyalty. On December 16, 1515, Afonso de Albuquerque died within sight of Goa. As his death was known, in the city great wailing arose, and many took to the streets to witness his body carried on a chair by his main captains, in a procession lit by torches amidst the crowd. Afonso's body was buried in Goa, according to his will, in the church of Nasa Senora de Serra, which he had been built in 1513 to thank the Madonna for his escape from Camarán Island. That night, the population of Goa, both Hindu and Portuguese, gathered to mourn his death. In Portugal, King Manuel's zigzagging policies continued, still trapped by the constraints of real-time medieval communication between Lisbon and India and unaware that Afonso was dead. Hearing rumors that the Mamluk Sultan of Egypt was preparing a magnificent army at Suez to prevent the conquest of Ormuz, he repented of having replaced Afonso. And in March 1516 urgently wrote to Albergaria to return the command of all operations to Afonso and provide him with resources to face the Egyptian threat. He organized a new Portuguese navy in Asia, with orders that Afonso, be made commander-in-chief against the Sultan of Cairo's armies. Manuel would afterwards learn that Afonso had died many months earlier, and that his reverse decision had been delivered many months too late. After 51 years, in 1566, his body was moved to Nasa Senora de Grasa Church in Lisbon, which was ruined and rebuilt after the 1755 Great Lisbon Earthquake. Albuquerque Monument on Afonso de Albuquerque Square in Lisbon Allegorical Fresco dedicated to Afonso de Albuquerque, present at the Palace of Justice of Vila Franca de Xira, in Portugal. Executed by Jamie Martins Barata Afonso de Albuquerque as Governor of India Tomb of Afonso de Albuquerque at the National Portuguese Pantheon in Lisbon King Manuel I of Portugal was belatedly convinced of Afonso's loyalty. And endeavoured to atone for his lack of confidence in Afonso by heaping honours upon his son, Braz de Albuquerque, whom he renamed Afonso in memory of the father. Afonso de Albuquerque was a prolific writer, having sent numerous letters during his governorship, covering topics from minor issues to major strategies. In 1557 his son published his biography under the title Commentarios du Grand Afonso d'Albuquerque. In 1572, Afonso's actions were described in the Lusiads, the Portuguese main epic poem by Luís Vaz de Camões. The poet praises his achievements, but has the muses frown upon the harsh rule of his men, of whom Camões was almost a contemporary fellow. In 1934, Afonso was celebrated by Fernando Pessoa in Mensagem, a symbolist epic. In the first part of this work, called Brazao, he relates Portuguese historical protagonists to each of the fields in the Portuguese coat of arms, Afonso being one of the wings of the griffin headed by Henry the Navigator. The other wing being King John II. A variety of mango, which was created by Portuguese Jesuits in Goa via grafting techniques, was named in his honor. Numerous homages have been paid to Afonso, he is featured in the Padrão dos Descobrimentos Monument, there is a square named after him in Lisbon, which also features a bronze statue. And two Portuguese navy ships have been named in his honor, the sloop NRP Afonso de Albuquerque and the warship NRP Afonso de Albuquerque. Thanks for watching.